Hey guys, Ox from 7th Hour Films back again with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last time around we had Golden Wind Requiem. Where basically, yeah, Golden Wind evolved into Golden Wind Requiem and completely and utterly just curb stomped, decimated Diavolo. And yeah, that was just kind of it. It just kind of like ended. There was no, he didn't have an answer for it. He just, ah, uh, and he's down. But alright, it's fine. We then also got uh, the punishment that Golden, Ren we Go Golden Wind Requiem can inexplicably do, which he can create an infinite death loop of some sort. So basically, Diavolo is living out every possible death there is in existence, which is infinite. I don't know why he has this power either, but yeah. And then we randomly cut away to uh, before Part 5 started, ish, where uh, Mista was tasked with uh, finding a stand user that killed a flower shop owner's daughter. And I know what you're thinking. God, that does sound very riveting. It is, in fact, not that riveting. Uh, I mean, it might have been riveting 20 episodes ago, but no, not really in the, in the last couple episodes of the, of the part. But uh, I actually, I was so flabbergasted by last episode that I actually went on to Twitter and was like, yo, what happened here? And somebody actually informed me that uh, this story with Mista right here was originally the epilogue of part five, not the, really the ending, I guess. Basically, Diavolo's done. That's over with. And that is the end of part five. This is an epilogue. But in the anime, boy, that does not work. That does not work. At least, you know, when you're coming at this, like, yeah, I'm coming at this not knowing that this was going to happen. So I'm like, okay, we got to go back there, right? Even if Diavolo is done, we got to go back there and, you know, wrap up Bucciarati, Polnareff. Are they going to wrap up what happened to Polnareff, you know? I hope so. He deserves it. But, you know, we gotta deal with, you know, the aftermath of defeating the boss, you know, but, and maybe we will get that, maybe we won't, but, yeah, the hard cut to this new story, boy, that doesn't work in the anime, unless, see, the only thing I could think that they could do to help this is if they had just put up a big title card that just said epilogue, because otherwise, I'm just kind of left standing here like Mike Wazowski, like, what, what, do, what do we do, you know? So yeah, so that's kind of where we are, that despite the fact that this is the finale of part five, the story's kind of over already, so yeah, so I don't know what we're going to get in this one, but yeah, let's let's find out. Uh, like always, the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure, so let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here we go. Let us go to the Colosseum. Okay, well, uh, that, all right, I'll take it. Uh, if they had just somehow figured out a better transition into that, that could have worked a whole lot better, you know? Or, like, if it had been... I don't know. There there was a better way of going about that. I'm just not sure what it would be, you know? But that's it. That is it for Part 5, Golden Wind. Oh, boy. That's it. We end with freaking... <laughs> dark variant Jorno and all of the all of the other mafiosos bowing before him oh boy that's pretty good that's pretty good um yeah that that's freaking great man this happened in like a week <laughs> that he just took over the the passione Oh, man, oh, man, that, that was something, that was something, all right, 
Okay, despite my qualms about the ending, and I do have them, overall, I enjoyed part five, you know? Because the more time passes, the more I'm willing to accept the final battle. Someone actually pointed out that while, yes, you don't get you know, a traditional JoJo fight between Giorno and Diavolo. The main final fight is sort of the race to get the arrow, you know? It's about the race to get the arrow, and once Giorno has it, then that's it. Giorno has won because he has the arrow. And if you look at it like that, it's a little bit better. I still don't really like Requiem stands because... They're just kind of nonsense, you know? It's like, oh, Silver Chariot, it's this, you know, super fast, super agile swordsman. Alright, what's its evolved form? Souls. It can swap souls. It can make mutations. Like, oh, what does that have to do with Silver Chariot? Nothing. Like, oh. Okay, and I know, I know that it's supposed to be... I guess it's supposed to be the user's wish, you know? It's supposed to be what the user needs in that moment in time in order to in order to survive, win, whatever they need. Whatever they need done, the the arrow gives them that power. So for Paul Nareff, it was to survive his fatal injuries, which he did now within the turtle. Which I'm glad it seems Paul Nareff is still alive now, which is good. And I'm I'm glad they finished that because I oh man I was gonna I was gonna be so mad if they didn't conclude uh, Polnareff's story at all. But but then but then it's like all right, Golden Wind Requiem. Golden Wind has the power to create life to you know imbue something with energy and all this stuff. All right. Golden Wind Requiem, it can revert things back to zero, which I only vaguely, I think, in the most vaguest sense can work of, well, Golden Wind can create, Requiem can undo, you know, but it can undo anything, not just whatever Jorno creates, you know? And also infinite death loops. That's just, that's just another thing on top of it, you know? That's just another thing it can do. So, honestly, I don't really care for Requiem stands, but I'm just gonna hope they don't kinda... They pretty much don't go on. I don't think they go on. I don't know. I mean, I don't really know... I don't really know how much, like... I, okay, here, before we get to part six, which we're gonna do next week... Which I'm excited for, because y'all have been really hyping up Part 6. Uh, which has been hilarious, because the entire time you guys have been hyping up Part 6, I've really been enjoying Part 5. So I'm just kind of sitting here like, oh man, fucking hyping me up, guys, come on. <laughs> Gotta be careful with that. But, I don't know, I'm, hope I'm very hopeful for Part 6. But, the only thing I really know about Part 6 is the main protagonist, Jolene... And I, if I'm correct, I believe she's Jotaro's daughter, and something about a prison. That's all I know. That's really all I know about Part 6, you know? Like, I think, like, if, I guess if we had started, uh, if we, had, when we started Part 5, I might have known, you know, uh, okay, I knew that Jorno was the... I think I knew the son, that Jorno was the son of Dio. Maybe I, I don't know. But, um, but I, kinda, I think I kind of knew that. And I think I knew it was kind of a mafia story. Which, it, a mafia story, it's still a JoJo mafia story. So, you know. But yeah, but you know, I vaguely know some things going into these. But, but yeah, so I don't know. But I don't think that Requiem stands come back, you know. But yeah. Also... Let's talk about, just briefly, the whole the whole thing of Jarno being Dio's son had no bearing on the plot whatsoever. 
just just none just none it 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 didn't matter at all like the only reason we did that was to have a JoJo be in Italy and not really connected to the previous JoJo's cuz he never met Jotaro he never met Josuke or any of them you know we had a little bit of you know Jotaro looking for him with uh with Koichi but that was it you know but other than that it it was literally it was literally just an excuse to put a JoJo in Italy for a mafia story, you know? Other than that, there was no reason that he needed to be Dio's son, you know? So, so there's that. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's an interesting thing. I will say at least, you know, again, because, you, you know, you might be listening to me talk about how much I like Part 5, and there were some moments where I was like, well, I don't know about this, you know? The, like, the first thing that pops up into my mind is uh, the Hitman team, who were kind of hit and miss, you know? Formaggio was okay. Okay, f like, if we go through them, and I don't even know if I can remember them all. Maybe I'll look up just a list so I keep them in mind. And we'll make this a decent, you know, comprehensive uh, Part 5 episode, Part 5 recap. So, JoJo... Hitman team. Squadra Escusioni. I don't know if that's how you say that or not. But yeah. Alright. So, of all of them, all of whom are dead, so, Formaggio, Formaggio was the first one. Yeah. Formaggio was, uh, the first one, uh, who, and he fought Narancha. Great episode for Narancha. Great, well, episodes is plural. Um, very long. Very that that went a little too long because you have to explain not only the Hitman team but you also had Narancha's backstory in there. But o otherwise, good. Uh, Iluso Mirror Man, pretty decent. Pretty decent, I must say. Uh, I enjoyed his fight. It was the only fight that Fugo had in the entirety of Part Five. Uh, but I like that. I like the back and forth. I, I thought that was also a good team battle too, because it wasn't just it just it wasn't just one of them versus uh, Iluso. It was it was Giorno, Abakio, and Fugo, and they all had different points of doing it. They all had to figure out what to do with each of their powers, and yeah, all of that that worked out. Um, uh, Prosciutto and Pesci were okay i think they only work because they were together but they were okay uh, first off i love prosciutto's drip his drip is probably my favorite uh of all of them maybe even in all of part five i don't know the, his, like his suit with his freaking uh nice uh shirt even though it's yellow and i'm not really a fan of yellow but that was really good that was really good uh, pesci i think the the main thing with prosciutto and pesci mainly pesci too is that he just didn't seem that threatening, you know? Because I know, you know, uh, was it Beach Boy or Fisherman? Like, it's, like, I get where the threat comes from. Oh, he can just rip your heart out and stuff. But on the other hand, he's a big doofy dude with a fishing pole. Like, that's not the scariest thing in JoJo, you know? But other than that, he's all right. Uh, I hated Malone and uh, and Babyface or Babyhead or Taserface or whatever the hell it was called, um, but again, it was a good episode for Giorno, and that was one of the few Giorno episodes, you know. So that was good. Giacchio was an actual threat. I liked him, and I liked his fight with Mista, ending with a good uh, a good Giorno moment as well. Risotto was also interesting, you know, great power first of all, and then just the fact that that was they coupled Risotto with fighting Dopio, I thought was really interesting. And Dopio, I freaking love Dopio, you know. Dopio and Diavolo were pretty good, you know. Now, one thing I will say, let's talk, you know, a little bit about Diavolo. Um, <sighs> one thing about Diavolo, okay. King Crimson, Emperor Crimson, whatever you want to call him. I don't really like... Okay, I don't hate King Crimson. I just don't really care for him. 
And there's nothing like about the design or anything. I hate that it's just, oh, it's time powers again. And I know, because people have told me that, yeah, this is just what Araki does. Like, oh, the most powerful people, the villains, they all have to have time powers. Which I really don't think they do. Because, uh, first off, you went two parts without time powers anyway. You know, you had Dio Brando and Cars, and they didn't have time powers. And if anything, Cars was stronger than that, because he was invincible at the end. And Joseph still won anyway, you know? Using the time stop for the world worked, you know? But the only reason that fight also worked was because Jotaro got a time stop, you know? He also had similar powers, but even then it was still a puzzle. Diavolo has a similar thing of like, ah, oh, I activate my stand, and then everything goes weird for a little bit, and then somebody dies. And it's like, oh, so it's... it's even though it is different from the world, it's basically the same effect in the story, you know? Is that something, you know, something weird happens, either, you know, either we see it or it just, you know, cuts away, and then something different, something is different now, and it's like, oh, okay, so it's, it's pretty, it's close enough, like, like, story-wise, that it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's the world again, like, you know. And then Jorno just gets his power too, and is like, "Oh, now I can just beat you." And it's like, "Oh, okay." That's kind of what I don't like about Jorno versus Diavolo is it's 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 just a poor man's Jotaro versus Dio, you know. And I really love Jotaro versus Dio. That's a really great fight, you know. But one thing I really love, and this is what I wish Araki would do more, and maybe. We got several more parts. I mean, you know, only part six has been animated, but, you know, I know that part seven and part eight are done, and I think he's uh, about to get started on part nine in the manga, so. Um, so what I would really appreciate more is a fight more similar to Josuke versus Kira. If I could somehow take the ending of part four and graft it onto part five, we would have a god-tier part. Like, we would have something that I would... I'd really be hard-pressed to say is not as good as part two, you know? So, if... Like, that is, like, my perfect JoJo part is the entirety of part five except the ending of part four, you know? Because Josuke versus Kira... Kira, who was already nonsense... <laughs> Kira, who was already nonsense, he could blow everything up if, that he wanted... And he had a second stand that did the same thing. A little drone stand that went and blew stuff up. He had two stands, and then he got a third power. A third power that could reverse time. So he has three powers, one of which he gains at the end. And here comes Josuke... Josuke, with the one power he's had the entire part, he never gains a new power, it's just his restoration, and he kicks Kira's ass to Sunday. Like, it is ridiculous. Like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, man, Josuke was the shit, man. Josuke was the fucking goat, apparently. Again, Josuke, who, you know, has this, you would think would have this terrible disadvantage, but he ends up winning against this super powerful uh, enemy. Like, father, like son. So, that's the thing. It's That's what drives me crazy about part four, is the ending is great. The rest of it is, eh, it's, it's okay. You know? It's okay at best. And it's dog shit Koichi at worst, you know? Uh, but that's the thing. So, that I really enjoyed. And there you go. Time power. Time power. But that time power was, like, next to useless on Josuke. And, I mean, I don't know. That just worked. And it was it was the interesting puzzle, you know? And I really like that about JoJo fights. That none of it is a typical, you know, shonen fight. Where it's like, ah, Kaioken, Super Saiyan, you know, Blue 85, you know, Blink 182 or something. And now I'm the winner or something. You know, it's always a puzzle. And then they broke that. He deliberately broke that at the end of a really good part. And that's what drives me crazy about Jorno versus Diavolo. And then, 
And then, this is not on a Rocky, but more on, uh, I guess, on David Production for these last two episodes. To hard cut to a different story? Oh, that was terrible. That was a bad idea. Even though it was a good story, and I know I haven't talked about it at all this episode, but it was okay. I, I, I like how it's more about, you know, do you accept your fate? Do you fight against it and stuff like this? You know, you could just take the rock and, you know, just accept your death there. Or if you break the rock, it will change, you know, this person's fate. And because of that, because of that, um, because of that, uh, it shows Mista trying, you know, trying to deal with, you know, the loss of Bucciarati and Narancia and Abacchio. It would be difficult, and it probably is difficult after that, uh, after they go to the Colosseum and find Bucciarati's body, you know? But at the same time, at the same time, it's, I don't know, there's something. So I, I like that part. The rest of the story, the rest of that story was kind of mid, to be honest. But other than that, it was all right. But it was, it was a good ending to it, you know. But yeah, so that was interesting. Um, that part at least was interesting. But, but yeah, the hard cut to it was really difficult, honestly. But yeah, so back to you know time stands. So yeah, if you're going to do time stands, that's fine. I think okay. I think one part of it is that, yes, Kira did eventually have a time stand. He also had an entirely other stand on top of that, you know? Like, that was the extra ability he got at the end. For the most part, Killer Queen is about the explosions, you know? And I think that's the problem. So then we go to Diavolo, and it's like, oh, it's basically Dio again. Where it's this guy who, once he activates his stand something happens for a little bit and to outside observers they just sort of pop you know there's just sort of a pop basically in time and then something happens and you have to figure out some way of doing that except instead of giving us the fight where it's like oh Jarno's figuring things out because they show you can counter it Polnareff did counter it a bit so and if Polnareff can do that in a fucking wheelchair Jarno could certainly do something about that so that could have been an interesting, you know, sort of back and forth kind of fight. But instead, they go the shonen route. It's like, ah, I've been hit by the arrow. Now, you know, Super Saiyan Blink-182 can attack. And now I win. And it's like, oh, okay. I I kind of wanted a JoJo fight because this is JoJo. And all JoJo fights are distinctly JoJo except that. So that's... That's kind of a problem I have with the ending of Part 5. Again, if I could take how great the ending of Part 4 is and graft it onto Part 5, this would be perfect, you know? This would be perfect. Even though, yes, I just said, you know, I have problems with some of the, the Hitman team and stuff. I would get over it because, overall, they were, those were just, eh, that was alright, you know? Good episode. I mean, like, for the most part, even, like, Melone, Formaggio, it's like, uh, or uh, Pesci... Those were good episodes for, you know, Giorno, Narancia, Bucciarati. Those were all good and interesting, you know? Even for stands where I kind of have a problem with them, you know? Stands where it's like, you know, Six Bullets or Spicy Lady or uh, Notorious B.I.G. or stuff like that. It's like those where it's like, oh, they're sentient or this one is, you know, life after death and stuff. I kind of get over that with a lot of these stories because the stories are still that good, you know? And again, that was a problem with Par 4. You know, you have something like Superfly that was the dumbest thing on God's Green Earth and it's like, and, and then you have a shit story around that and it's like, oh, well, this sucks, you know? It's like, yeah, do I not like... I don't like sentient stands, but... Mista is a much better character than Koichi, you know? Like, yeah, you give Koichi a sentient stand, I hate that, because I already hate Koichi, and now there's two of them. But you have Mista, who's really cool and really interesting, and you give him a sentient stand, alright, I can take it, because I like Mista, you know? Or Trish, I like Trish, that was great. Ugh. But yeah... So that's kind of it for part five. And yeah, I, we could talk a bit more about the whole sculptor and the rock. I don't really care enough to do that. So 
So yeah, that was the end of part five, which overall, you know, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it an A minus. I'm going to give it a 90%, 90% really friggin' good. The other 10%, nah, it's all right. You know, it's never bad. It's just, it's all right. You know, except for Maloney. I, I hated him, but again, otherwise it was a good Giorno episode. So yeah, but yeah. That is the end of part five. We have one more part left in JoJo. At least it's animated. So, and I don't expect that they're they're even going to be. I, I I don't expect that they'll have even announced part seven by the end by the time I catch up with part six. So yeah, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see what happens after what we're going to be doing after part six. But we got a bit of a ways to go. So yeah, next week we start. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6 Stone Ocean. So, with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reactions. You can catch up on all five parts before we get to part six. And there's another video on screen as well. Uh, there's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.